Well, I'm really excited to bring you today's video. I've been waiting for this for a long time and I'm excited to share it with you. So today we're gonna to be installing the road active suspension on our Ford F-150. We are within the tow capacity of our truck, but for safety as well as for the handling, I wanted to install this after doing a lot of research. We did get some comments about the squat on our truck and uh, we had people commenting about installing airbags or other type of suspension uh, helper springs. And after doing all the research that I've done, I landed on the road active suspension and I'm really excited to get this installed today. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Just a quick disclaimer, we did not purchase the road active suspension. They did send it to us so that we could make this video. And we just wanna say thank you to road active suspension. I also want to point out that it is made in the USA and we're really proud of that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is get a baseline. I'm going to take measurements of all four of the wheel bases to the ground before I install the road active suspension. Then I'm going to back up to our rig and I'm going to put the full rig weight on the truck and take those measurements and document those. Then I'm gonna install the road active suspension and pull the truck right back here again, take those four measurements with the road active installed. Then I will hook up the rig and put the full weight on the truck and take measurements again. I will document all four of those so we can take a look at uh, if there is indeed a difference. One thing that I wanna mention is I am not a mechanic, I'm not a professional. I do a lot of the work on our truck, but anybody can do this. The instructions that come with the RAS system uh, give really good detail and are easy to follow. So don't worry at all if you're not mechanically inclined, you can do this job. One thing you wanna make sure you do is put on your parking brake and chalk your tires. Uh, when you lift the rear end up and put it on jack stands, uh, you don't want any incidents. Your first step is going to be to loosen all of the lug nuts before you raise the vehicle up. Make sure to put the jack under the rear differential. Put the jack stands under the front eye or shackles and make sure to raise the jack back up just so it's touching the rear differential. Then you can take the tires off. So the 3611 YHD, which is for heavy duty, they come with bump stop spacers that have to be installed. So we'll be putting those on as well. Center the RAS suspension on top of the leaf springs, placing the eye bracket hook over the rear leaf spring hanger. Then take off the bolt and spacer and flip it over and get it into position. Begin spinning the spring, which extends the RAS suspension placing the holes in front of the front leaf spring U-bolt. Once you reach the desired position, you can put your bolt and spacer back in. Now I started out with mine on the second hole, but ended up moving it to the third hole. So it's really important to make sure that your bracket, your spacer, and your bolt are resting against the bottom of your leaf spring when you install this. Then using two wrenches, start tightening down the spring to put tension on it. So you're just going to keep tight tightening this down until the spring starts opening up and RAS supplies two spacers. One is a 20% and one is a 40% and we want to use the 40%. Uh, so I'm going to put the 20% away and you just keep tightening this down until your spacer fits in between your, your coils, your spring.
So after your spacer fits in all of your spring coils, you know you're at 40%. Then all you have to do is tighten down these two uh, nuts and then the jam nut behind it to hold it in place. And then this side is done. I have the bump stop loosened up. That bolt was kind of rusted and I did not have the right size socket for the job. Uh, I did have a 13 millimeter, but it was only with a quarter inch drive and that's just not beefy enough to remove a rusted bolt. So I went to the store, picked up a 3H drive, 13 millimeter. Due to the amount of rust, I was having a hard time getting the bump stop off, so I ended up just cutting it off with a hacksaw. You can see where the tack welds were that broke free. So you may have to clean up the rust off of these. In order for it to slide into the spacer, that rust buildup on there was holding it out. Now what you want to pay attention for, the spacers say wheel on it. You want to make sure that this part of the spacer is facing where the wheel is. So it'll look like this. They give you two different size bolts, two different lengths. So you can use either one. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna mount this to the frame first. You're gonna insert your bolt and you're gonna mount it to the frame. And then you can slide your bump stop up and put the nut on and snug it up. Since I had to cut my nut and bolt, they give you four, uh, two different lengths to choose from. So I'm gonna use one of the four to replace the one I cut off. Okay, so here's what I did. I just ran to the hardware and picked up a couple more uh, nuts and uh, I picked up a jam nut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bolt this down to the frame and then I'm going to put a jam nut over the top of it. Fortunately Ford has a cutout on the back side of this frame, a circle here. So I should be able to get in there with a wrench or a pair of pliers to tighten this down. All right, that completes the install on the driver's side. Got it all mounted on there. And now all I gotta do is jump over to the passenger side, which should not be this difficult because the uh, welded nut is still welded to the frame. So it should just be a quick mount and we'll get the tires put back on and this install will be 100% complete. So now we're going to go on a test drive and see how it rides and then I need to get some measurements on all four tires, hook up to the trailer, get some measurements. Alright, so now we have the road active suspension installed and we are not hooked up to our rig. So let's go ahead and get some measurements and record them. All right, so the road active suspension is installed on the truck, and today I'm gonna to be getting about 800 gallons of water. Uh, it's roughly 6,700 pounds and some change, not including the trailer. 
uh, which that is in a terrible heavy trailer. Um, so, but I want to put this to the test and see what the squat looks like with about 7,000 pounds. Based on my calculations, I'm probably at around five to 700 pounds of tongue weight based on just shy of 7,000 pounds of water weight on a dual axle trailer. So as you can see, there is no squat at all with the water tank full. Well, we made it to Minnesota from Michigan. We drove about 750 miles towing our RV. So we got a really good idea how the RAS system performed. So I just wanna wrap up this review and give you our overall thoughts and opinions. Before I do, I wanna mention the spreadsheet. Now, through this entire process, I took measurements and dumped them into a spreadsheet. And there's a link in the description. If you're a numbers person and wanna see that detail, make sure to check out all the numbers in the spreadsheet. I also included the numbers from towing the 1,025 gallon nurse tank or water tank. I put those in there as well. Now, I tried to make sure the weight in the truck as well as the RV was the same when I took all these measurements. However, traveling from Michigan to Minnesota, uh, some of the weight got moved around and changed. I tried to put it back where it was, uh, but if you see some numbers that are a little different, that's the reason why. In addition, when I got to Minnesota, I took some additional measurements that I did not take in Michigan, uh, basically because I didn't think to do so, and I'll explain why. On the drive out here, Lori and I were talking, and I realized I never changed the height of our hitch from our old RV. So once we got here to Minnesota, I made the adjustment on the hitch and took new measurements. I also realized I didn't take any measurements with the weight distribution hitch hooked up. So I did that as well while we were here. So there are some additional measurements in the spreadsheet here in Minnesota that were not taken in Michigan, uh, but I just wanted to explain that to you. So my initial thoughts after installing the RAS, I was really happy. You could see the difference just with the naked eye. And then when I took measurements, uh, it, it brought the rear of the truck up significantly. So I was happy about that. And then when I hooked up the RV, I was a little bit disappointed. Uh, we still did come up some, uh, just not as much as I was hoping. However, uh, I was completely past being disappointed after test driving uh, the truck as well as pulling the RV. Uh, the performance totally outweighed some tape measure uh, numbers. So driving the truck, with the RAS hooked up, without the RV, just to and from work, uh, city traffic, local roads, uh, local interstate, I could totally tell a difference in the performance of the truck. Lori could tell when she was in the truck with me. Uh, there was no wheel hop, felt like uh, there was more traction, no porpoising even if I had a load in the back of the truck. Uh, it just, everything handled better. Going around curves, there was no side to side roll. It still drove like a F-150 should. Uh, nice soft ride, so I was really happy with that. Now on the drive out here pulling our RV, once again, I was really impressed with the difference in towing our RV with the RAS hooked up, or with the RAS installed. Lori even noticed uh, there was no porpoising. She made a comment that she didn't need her essential oils for motion sickness. Uh, there was no porpoising, better handling on the front end and steering, uh, better traction, uh, and most importantly, there was no sway at all. Overall, we were really happy with the way the truck performed with the RAS system while pulling our RV. Now what makes the story even better was once we got here and I made the adjustment on the hitch and then hooked up the weight distribution, the truck and the RV were completely level all the way across. I would highly recommend the RAS system to anyone, especially if you're experiencing some towing issues. So if this install and review video has helped, 
drop us a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. You can also hit that like button. That helps us out as well. And don't forget, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Now get out there and wander.